Hey everybody, Antonio here, Rock Church and World Outreach Center. This is the Rock Life Podcast. We are so blessed. We have been having such a great time as we are in our Rock Life series going through our sermon series on Sunday, kind of doing a sermon rewind. Uh, and we are in a Your World series. We just kicked off a mini series within this on parenting. I am here with Pastor Dan today, and we are just going to do a sermon rewind again and really just go into topics from the sermon, what this looks like. Again, a sermon only allows so much time, but when we get to sit down with you all, with Pastor Dan, uh, we get to have some fun, ask some fun questions. So we're glad that you're here with us. Hey, I want to encourage you to spread the word. Stay tuned all the way through. Maybe ask questions. We want, we're following those questions. We want to answer anything that you guys might have. This is a great platform for that. Uh, and the, again, remember, this is just a supplemental. So if you're enjoying this, make sure that you watch the coinciding message or really any of our messages. It's going to bless your life. And so we're very excited that you're here. Pastor Dan. Hey, good to see you all today. I, I just got to set the stage because Pastor Antonio made me <laughs> a cup of coffee. And uh, so I just need you all watching to just imagine the aroma and the smell of the yes. most delicious cup of coffee. So if you see me like sipping on this, yes. it's because it's really good. So every time he talks, <laughs> I think I'm going to be taking a little sip. So um, anyways, but it's good to be with you all. Um, man, parenting. We had such a great response this past yeah. weekend. And obviously any parents are going to have a response. And then those that, that don't have kids but want them were leaning in, I could tell. Yeah. Um, you know, we all have those stories from our childhood. Yeah. You know, scraping our knee and coming and crying and mom or dad or, you know, yeah. whatever that was. And, and we're in a society where things are rapidly changing. And so um, just kind of neat to see, you know, us going into this and, and uh, coming off of marriage and mm -hmm. being single into yeah. parenting. Yeah. You know, it's really a neat thing that, you know, God ordained. Yeah. And, and that's the beautiful thing about parenting, uh, I think, specifically. And we got another week, so I'm excited to see where that goes it's, as well. It's going to be exciting. And I don't know if you if you heard, because obviously, you know, you think of parenting, maybe, you know, someone doesn't have small children or teenage children. But you made a comment like, hey, parenting never ends. And so many so many people from the crowd, hey, man, that's right. Oh, man. And then, you know, the, the sub conversations like, oh, yeah, I, I'm still parenting my kid. So it, it really, it is a place for if you've had children or really if you are influential in people's life. Yeah. Uh, you, it's a thing. It takes a village idea that these are all going to be principles that will benefit your life. Uh, and so, you know, one of the questions, Pastor Dan, again, it is our sermon rewind. Uh, and, and but more than just going through a recap or reiterating the points that you touched on, uh, there's this little segment that I want to make sure that we ask. And again, because I know you got to preach the message a few different times yeah. between Saturday and Sunday. But what is that like? man, whether it was time or, you know, just didn't feel right in the message. What was, if anything, uh, a thought, a point, uh, a scripture that you just didn't get to put in the message? It didn't make its way in or just didn't make it on the, off the notes? Uh, and what, what, share that with us. Well, some fun things about the message. First of all, and this is just exclusively for our podcast listeners. No <laughs> one else is going to know this. Um, but me and Pastor Mike Bryan mm -hmm. uh, and Pastor Jessica are going to know this. Um, so I'm letting you all in and you, and you in today. Yes, sir. Um, and that is, is that uh, when I started studying for this message, I actually reached out to Pastor Mike Bryan. In, in fact, I did it for the singles, really, because yeah. uh, I was asking him about being a single dad. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that don't know Pastor Mike Bryan's testimony, um, he was married, had his daughter Chantel, and his wife uh, left and, and went into, you know, uh, the, the wrong lifestyle, that sort of a thing. And, and so he was there raising Chantel as a single dad and um, got saved and, and filled with the Holy Spirit, and God was moving in his life. And so um, he put together a, a sermon called No Wimps Parenting that he oh, did, yeah. you know, for, for years and years and years. He would, he would uh, teach that here at The Rock. That might even be on our, our website resource page, you know, with teachings and things like that. Yeah. They might have No Wimps Parenting. So you can hear Pastor Mike's story. Uh, he's got a fun one about Chantel with a mouse in her mouth. <laughs> That's kind of a fun story, but um, but when I when I reached out, he sent me the notes yeah. oh, cool. for No Wimps Parenting for the singles, yeah. so that I could yeah. see his experience and see if there was any principles that I could draw on when I was preparing that message. Well, as I was reading his message on No Wimps Parenting, I text Pastor Mike and I said, Pastor Mike, I'm literally going to steal your message. <laughs> And just preach it and call it my own. Yeah, yeah. And he laughed and said, you're going to do such a better job yeah. and this and that. But but uh, literally, I took his yeah. message outline, his yeah. scriptures, right, right. 
and I crafted the message that I preached. Now, right. obviously, it's different, right. you know, right. um, and I, I use different points, but verbatim, yeah. things like uh, introduce your children to God. That was yeah. Pastor Mike's sentence. That yeah, was yeah. not my sentence. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, and then uh, uh, see your children as a gift from God. Yeah. Those two sentences are direct quotes out of Pastor Mike's No Wimps Parenting. So now you, now you all know Pastor Dan doesn't come up with every great idea. Well, I heard um, his leadership principle. If you have eyes... Plagiarize. <laughs> <laughs> now the colleges wouldn't in agree church, with that. In yeah. Church, in church models, right? <laughs> Here, here's a, here's one uh, from leadership. When we yeah. were being taught how to preach, uh, they would say the first time you use it, say oh, as so and so says. The second yeah. time you say someone once said, yeah. and then the third times you say as I always yeah, say. Exactly. You know, so <laughs> you know, I was like Pastor Jim. I, yeah. I think you know he he was quoting. Uh, There's no commitment with anything without consistency. Yeah. He goes, Pastor Dan always says. And then he stopped and he said, I think I said that. <laughs> You just got so used to it. Oh, man, yeah. It was like, he's quoting me, but I was yeah. quoting him, you know. So, that's awesome. yeah, no, I think that's the neat thing about God. What did we get that we didn't get from that's God, right. right? And so we don't have to come up with every great mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. I've preached stuff and reworded it from Charles Spurgeon, you know right. what I mean? Right. Uh, because, hey, he's not around to say plagiarism, you know. <laughs> so, um, no, but but very good stuff. And, and so Pastor Mike Bryan, credit. <laughs> Sir. But, uh, but yeah, the, one of the things that I didn't get to in the message, though, is uh, the principle. I quoted the scripture at the top of the message to train up a child in mm-hmm. the way yeah. that he should go. I think it's Proverbs 22, 16. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not, somebody, somebody check that yeah, and put yeah. it in the comments, <laughs> whether or not we're telling the truth. Fact checkers. Yeah, right. fact check me, please. <laughs> put it in the comments. Um, but train up a child in the way that he should go. And, and even when he's old, he yeah. will not depart from it. Yeah. And the, the thing that I didn't get to in, in this scripture that I would have loved to have unpacked, but I needed to get to the content of the yeah, message, right. um, was, was that that train up a child in the way. That word, the way, is the path or the road that he should, he should go on. And, and really, if you look it up in the Amplified Bible, mm-hmm. it says to their natural bent, mm-hmm. to their personality, if right. you will, um, train them up according to how they're designed Wow. By God. Right. I think that's the neat thing about parenting is that each one of your children is going to be different. Um, I have three, and they're yeah. like snowflakes. No two yeah. are alike, right. you know. Right. Some have some similar characteristics, yeah. and then definitely we see more of me and my traits in two of them yeah. and more of my wife in yeah. one of them. Yeah. And so that's that's helped us to parent. Right. But really, each of them is their own, you know, blend uh, the way God made them. Right. And they, they'll have character traits of me. They'll have character traits of Jessica. We'll find character traits of their grandparents. Right, right. You know, um, one of my kids looks like his great uncle, wow. which is quite a different thing because we're like, he didn't look... <laughs> And we're, we're kind of right, looking at grand, yeah. and then we're, and then it, it took uh, one of the grandparents to say, oh, he looks like my brother, you know, and it was just like, wow, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, that is cool. But, um, but you know, that's physical traits, but, but even, even personality wise, right. we've seen that uh, coming out of them, that each one of them is, is very different. And I would have loved to have unpacked that concept, yeah, yeah, you know, and right. really explored that yeah. based on the individuality of each right. child. You can run with it. I mean, you can take all your points out of out of Yes. Yeah. For, for, well, think about it. Loving your children, right. you're going to love them uniquely based on them. Right. Right? Not just because they're your child. I mean, absolutely because they're just your child. Right. You know, um, no matter how they look, how they act, right. a, a parent's going to love their children. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's where, for us, seeing them as a gift from God, uniquely their personality is a gift from God. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you... Um, my kids have, have blessed me. Right. And really, when I take a look at them uniquely, individually, as far as loving my children, yeah. um, you know, there are things unique to each one of them. One of them uh, is, is very sporty you yeah. know, and athletic, and I, I love that part of them. You right. know? Uh, another one is very artistic and creative. I yeah. love that about them. Another one is very intelligent and, uh, and very humorous. Mm-hmm. And, and, and not that all three of them don't have a, a specific humor, which, yeah. you know, or a specific creativity or a specific athletic ability, but, but each one of them excels in those areas. Yeah. And that is, that has actually grown my love for them uniquely because right. I'm able to experience different things with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and even seeing God in them, how they respond to God, how they relate with God, how they 
uh, relate with church and yeah. the Word and the Scriptures, you know. Um, we were just uh, talking to our kids. Every morning we ask our kids, and, and we don't want them checking a box, yeah. but we ask them, did you read your Word this morning, right. you know, um, just, to, uh, just to be accountable and as a reminder to them as well. That sparked some great conversations yeah. out of the Word. Um, but one of our, our kids told us, no, I didn't. And we're like, well, you better. And they, they told us, you know what, I, I've been reading at night. Yeah. And it was like, oh, right. Well, yeah. You know, as as long as you're reading, like, yeah. you know. So our, our question might change to, hey, did you read last night? Right. And and the follow up uh, to that is, what did you read? You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it still brings the accountability side. Right. It's not checking a box. Yeah. But at the same time, it opens the door to another conversation, which yeah. is, is what what's God speaking to you through the Word? Yeah. You know, and and that's something that again, my my heart and my love for my children yeah. uniquely. The way that they were designed by God, yeah. you know, can can grow and, and ca- can grow in experience, in knowledge, in understanding. Yeah. You know, those are those are some phenomenal things about our kids. Well, let me ask you a pas- question out of that, Pastor Dan, because I know that was one of the uh, areas I got ministered in, in you know, confessions uh, of a pastor here. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, in that in that point and talking about love and, and with that scripture in mind, because I've heard of that that natural bend. I remember with one of my children, uh, their natural bend wasn't my natural bend. Sure. And so, you know, in the example that you're bringing here is like, you know, we read the Bible in the morning. It's like, well, if that's not what's natural, like that doesn't, hey, they're, because I mean, I, you've even talked about how you're a night person, Pastor Jessica is a morning person. Yeah. So I, what, but in my mistake as a, my flawed humanness, I almost wanted my child uh, to kind of be in my bend and so I wouldn't quite understand why their bend was this way and how, why they responded to things this way. And it almost um, hurt me. Mm-hmm. And it almost, what I found was it was creating some resentment in me sure. um, because that, that wasn't their bend and I wanted to understand. And they're my child after all, right? And so, um, you know, when I, but then I get challenged with this idea of love and, and raising them up. And it, love would require me to find that natural bend. Yeah. As opposed to just, well, I'm your dad, and I'm going to make your personality. I'm going to mold your personality. And I wonder how many parents kind of tend to do that yeah. uh, versus taking the time to find natural bend and and maybe hang up our expectations. You know, like, oh, I, want, they, I want them to play this sport, or I want them to play this musical instrument, or I want them to do these things because I want to, they're my son, they're my daughter, I want to bond with them in this way. And kind of getting past the letdown of, Something that really shouldn't let us down as much as just like, hey, it wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't what I thought, but it doesn't mean they're wrong. Well, I think of it in these terms, um, you know, when we're trying to press our children into a mold that looks like us, mm-hmm. there's a selfish motivation yeah. to that because, yeah. and, and, you know, I, I think in some ways it can be innocent. Right. We want to relate with them. There's right. things that we like that, my goodness, I you know, yeah. for a, a, a guy that likes baseball, I'd love to throw the ball with right. my son. Right. Right. You know, and then he has a daughter that wants to do tea parties, right. and he's going, I hate this, you know. <laughs> right. Um, and and, and I, I, I understand that completely. Right. There's plenty of things that I've done for my kids that I have not liked. And that that's the definition of love, though, right? right? Exactly. Personal yeah. self-sacrifice for the betterment of someone else. Can yeah. we love of our kids yeah. enough to jump into their world yeah. the way that they relate with us yeah. with others with God uh, you know with life what are their likes you know um, you you may not have liked biology or science growing up and you get a kid that you think is a nerd yeah. and, and you have to <laughs> take them to the aquarium right. and to the yeah. zoo and they want to go yeah study rocks and do geology yeah, and they yeah. they think that that's fun and you're right. going i'm staring at dirt you know like this is not fun right. uh you know but but to them it's it's amazing right. you know or they like history and they want to go to the california missions or to the the yeah. museums and you're like i want to go to the ball game you know i wanted to share that yeah. with my kids but god says love them love right. them where they're at right. you know lay down your personal preferences yeah get into their world and explore those things with them right. so that when they grow old, right, yeah, they're, they're not going to depart from them. You, you, you're loving them where they're at, mm-hmm. not where you want them to be at, right? right? Yeah. yeah. That, that, you know, <laughs> and that's helpful. I know for me, I would imagine for many parents because there is, and you brought up the example of like, 
this is the the last thing I would want to do. You know? Oh, for sure. I remember um, one of my children was talking. I mean, they, they like to play video games. And like, you say that you love me and you want to do things with me. But to me, so that's like, yeah, like, let's go throw the ball around. Let's go do this. Play video games with me. I'm just like, but to them, I mean, they got emotional it's about it. Spent, yeah. Like, it's, I want, this is quality time. It's something I enjoy doing. Yeah. And I don't want to play video games. <laughs> but there is some of that yes. sense of, um, this is something that you will connect with. And so right. it's like, I want to be outside. Or, and, and it is that self-sacrifice that I'm sure. Yeah. So I'll play video games. There, there's you. obviously give and take. And I think yeah. that's where, you know, um, we can meet in the middle in some ways. Hey, let's play video games for an hour. Let's go outside for an right. hour, you know. And then they actually enjoy yeah. both, yeah. right? Um, but, but at least you showed them, hey, I'm willing to meet you at your level. Come meet me right. at mine, too, yeah. you know. Um, and, and that's just good parenting. And then as well, understanding what's good and what's not good. If we're spending all the time inside yeah. staring at a screen, right. then we're not experiencing some of those healthy things for right. our lives, like getting energy out, you know, and, yep. and exercise and fresh air and all that stuff that does good for yeah, our soul, for sure. you know? Um, and, and so that's, that's one of those give and take things, but at the same time, yeah, um, you know, get, get involved with them. What game do you like? Let's right. play that game. Can we play it together? Sometimes they want you to sit there and watch them as right. they play a game. Yeah, right. And I mean, that has <laughs> been one of those things that it's like, I hate this, yeah. you know, I don't want to sit there and watch it. Um, you know, so, yeah. so we, we, we do have to give of ourselves mm -hmm. and do things that we don't want to do in order to connect with them. Right. But the conversation again, why do you like this game? Right. Yeah. What's fun about this, yeah. you know, and, and not what's fun about this, you know, it's, it's genuinely wanting to know the answers and that may spark some real great conversations yeah. to where, you know, some of these boys, especially with these military games, mm -hmm. hey, would you ever want to go to the Air and Space Museum right. or would you ever want to go and, and check out, mm -hmm. you know, March Air Reserve Base yeah. has their, their planes out yeah. there and I mean, yeah. there might be some history stuff that they, I mean, out. You, you might learn how much they know about World yeah. War II or about, you know, yeah, some of these sure. things, you know, modern warfare and things like that. They, they may be a weapons expert in yeah. their future or something. Who knows, right. you know? Yeah, that's good, Pastor. Um, you know, I was thinking, uh, one, one of the insights that you had regarding even just faith, and, and you identified that as one of, of the key, right, of the three that you gave oh, out, of the, two, the, of the equipment that we covered, faith. Uh, was you you know I put an, an asterisk in my note like the most important. Yeah. Uh, what unpack that for us and what what that looks like and why and yeah. what on a prac and you gave us some practical but maybe go into depth. Yeah, I think that the again flowing with this their natural bent, right. it's going to take faith for that individual and your faith is going to be different for each child. That's good. I think a, a good for instance, I have a girl and two boys. Right. My faith for my girl is different than my faith for my boys, right? right? I mean, you've got a yeah. boy and two girls, yep. right? Yep. So you, you understand that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. and, and we, we launched out the gate with the girl. Right. I mean, something about a daddy's heart with their girl, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, I realized very quickly because I'm a man, mm -hmm. where men's minds go right. and what they're looking at yeah. when it comes to, to females, especially yeah. out there in the world, yeah. the dangers that are out there. My wife has made me very aware mm -hmm of what women face that men right. don't face. I mean, right. when we go to our car yeah. at night, right. most of the time we're not looking over our shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're not thinking about if someone's going to attack us or I violate us. Somebody would. That's what I yeah. <laughs> Let somebody, right? Like that's, I mean, but that's probably not going on in the mind of a girl. No, no. <laughs> and, and so I, I see those unique challenges. Right. I, I see uh, that there is still prejudice mm -hmm. in, in some ways, and they're going to have to come up against some things, even right. in the church, you yeah. know, for yeah. women. Right. You know, our church, we, we have women in ministry. Right. We, yeah. we interpret the Bible differently when we yeah. see people like Deborah and mm -hmm. Phoebe. Yeah. You know, uh, in the New Testament, you've got women that ministered, uh, Aquila and Priscilla. Yep. I mean, there's just some, some great examples in the Word of God. Yeah. And yet, the church runs with two scriptures in their interpretation of mm -hmm. it that I don't agree with yeah. and hinders half the body of Christ. And so I understand that my daughter... Mm -hmm who loves theology and yeah. who's studying it in college right now, as she goes into the church world, even in our church, yeah. there are going to be people who come in who are uninformed right. uh, and unbelieving in that area. Yeah. And, and God bless them, but my goodness, they've been taught what I believe erroneously, right. you know? Right. And, so, um, and so she's going to have to come up against those challenges. So my faith for her yeah. is actually unique to her. You know, uh, same thing with my boys. You know, I got I got a boy that wants to do business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got a boy that that hasn't landed. He's had some dreams and some thoughts, yeah. but he's not not 
invested yet mm -hmm. in his future. And so my faith for my boys is, is even unique to them. Okay, if that's, that's what they're looking at, if that's what they're called to, yeah. you know, um, those things, my prayers for them, I try and pray individual prayers for them every day, um, looking at the, the unique things that they face. They're in different seasons. I got one coming out of junior high into high school, one that's about ready to be a senior and who's yeah. looking at his future. Do I want to go to college? Right. Do I want to start into a career, right. you know? And so those are unique things to each of them, you know? My daughter's just started her college journey, finished her first year. She's headed into her second year, you yeah. know, and, and starting some neat things there on the campus. And so I'm praying for her individually. I, I think that's the neat thing about faith. Um, and, and throughout their lives, you know, um, they've had unique, even, uh, you know, we talked about praying for them right. for healing, yeah. you know, yeah. each of them had unique challenges when it came to their, their health. Um, one of them, it was mental health, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, the devil was just attacking right. suicidal right. thoughts, uh, identity issues and things like that, that we had to come up against kind of in that junior high, early yeah. high school yeah. period. We had to teach them to overcome in that area. Right. Uh, another one, it was their physical health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they went into kindergarten, um, you know, we we uh, we had a word from God early on not to get shots. Mm -hmm. Not not that we were opposed to them or anything yeah. like that, but just for that individual child, yeah. we had a word from God for them not to get the shots. So we didn't get the shots while they were going into school, and the school required it. So we're praying, we're not getting a, a fresh word from God, and and we made the mistake of not sticking with the word that we heard. Right. And so we said, well, you know. My, my mom had the same word when I was growing up. Yeah. And so she shared that with me. And, and she said, when you were five, I went ahead and got you shots. Yeah. So we went based on what she said yeah. rather than on what God said mm -hmm. and made a mistake. Right. And, and when we got him the shots, all of a sudden he started twitching. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the guilt yeah. of a parent. Right. I mean, we're like, we gave our kid, yeah. you know, yeah. Tourette's syndrome right. Or, right. or nervous tics or, yeah. you know, what's going on. Yeah. And I mean, we labored, we cried. Yeah. Years, years we had to work through that process, and we had to train that child, hey, you need to fight for your own health. Right. We, we want you to speak over yourself. Yeah. And they ended up getting the victory, but it took years, years, right. and it worked its way through their body. So it wasn't know? just one prayer. It wasn't just one day. It wasn't just one I time. wish. <laughs> right. I wish right. it was one prayer. Right. I wish it was just immediate yeah. faith, right. you know. But it was faith over time and consistency and training that child. I believe God allowed it to teach right. us to obey, obviously. Right. Stick with what I say, yeah. ch children, you know. Yeah. But secondly, to teach our, our child to overcome, right. you know. So and The value in persistence and perseverance. For sure. I, I think of... of as parents, the journey you guys went on and having to speak that and yeah. teaching you to be consistent, but also in growing their individual faith. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I think those are, I think we maybe overestimate some of those things sometimes and get discouraged. Like, mm -hmm. God, you've abandoned us rather than we're not seeing the opportunity for the lesson or for the equipping that God really desires for us sure. um, to, because I bet you now, they, if if a physical ailment or something comes along that we hey there's already I, there's I've seen the precedent of his For goodness sure. yeah. of his faithfulness mm -hmm. and what it took on my part if I know how to fight this I can fight that but if we just go through life you know without any of those things then where is the faith and I think that was yeah. the thing you were talking about was the teaching of faith and it's not faith when it just comes out of the air right it's the things that we don't see and having it happen, right? right? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and uh, as, as parents, those can be the struggles because we desire to give our children good gifts. You even talked about it last night, you know, who gives their kid a snake? I mean, we, we, we desire them to have things, but there is the journey that they're going to go on yeah. and having to have that. And we hear our kids now, um, you know, uh, if they're dealing with something, we'll hear them praying over themselves. And uh, that, nothing blesses our hearts more than to see them right. operating in, the, in their own faith, right. you know, because they have to have it. We, they, they can't have ours. Right. You know what I mean? They've got to believe God for themselves because there's going to come a day we may not be here, mm -hmm. you know, and so they have to stand on their own two feet. That's so good, Pastor. And, and the value of implementing that. And, and that, that's not because you're a pastor. Right? No, that's it's because I'm a parent. It's, it's, it's true because yeah. you're a parent. And I think that's, that's the desire. That's why <clears throat> I believe God put this on your heart for this series is because in the same way that we're equipping for marriage, we're equipping for singleness, and we're going to be getting to finances, we're going to get into employment. These are areas of your world, right? Your world series um, that the Bible has something to say. Sure. And Scripture has something to say, and God wants to walk us through 
um, to be success, successful in this area of our life. Yeah. You know, um, as, as we're talking about this, you know, I think the, the last point we talked about discipline and there was three, three areas of that. We talked about instruction, correction, and then punishment. Right. And, you know, once again, going with these unique ways that our children are, are bent, you know, discipline is a similar one that uh, discipline for each child is going to be different, too. Um, I have three very unique children. Uh, you know, we could discipline one with a, a stern warning, a correction, uh, you know, if, if the punishment came, a spanking when they were little, um, and they would take it. They would cry, we'd hug on them, reaffirm with love, reiterate the instruction, and send them on their ways. I had another child that, you know, man, they'd be getting in our face, yelling back at us. Uh, we'd spank them and they would, you know, and, and, and get angry rather than get tearful and sad. And, um, and we had to learn uniquely how to discipline them. And then as they've grown older, uh, that's changed too, because one of them, you could take their phone away and it wouldn't do a thing for them, you know? Um, but, but, you know, another one, you take their phone away and they would, no, yeah, the world's yeah, over, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm you know, yeah. yeah, they're like almost like a dry eye looking yeah, for a yeah, fix, yeah, you know, they're like, yeah. I, I need the phone, you know, and it just, it, it's been interesting to see, you know, one of them, we could just yell at them and they would crumble and cry. Right. You know, and it was just like, okay, so we, we had to learn how to speak to them, what, what speaks to them. And in that process of discipline, even the instruction, because, you know, I could explain things one time, one way to one of them. And then when I would go to the other one, try and do that same thing, they, they almost needed something different. You know, uh, sometimes they need to be shown, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I want you to do the dishes. Come over here with me to the sink right. and let me show you this. And yeah. these are the things that you have to hand wash. These are the things that can actually go in the dishwasher. I could speak that to one of them. The other one had to see it, right. you know. Right. And, and so uniquely our kids, we've had to learn over times and even over seasons as they've changed and as they've grown, what's going to work uniquely for them, right. you know. Yeah. And, I, and I think well, that's a key point for that's parents. The, that's the love based. And I, yeah. I think yeah. nothing has exposed maybe some of the pride in my life like being a parent because I want to have good, well-behaved children. Sure. I, I don't want to be that parent, <laughs> right, that has their kids screaming in the line. I remember that we, you, you would know if I said the name, a, a single friend but before they were married with children saw a kid screaming in the grocery aisles and my kid would never. Well, it was almost kind of like wait and see, <laughs> right, because I bet you that parent said the same thing. And, then, and there's a pride of us that doesn't want our kid to do this. Yeah. And so I would find myself getting angry when my children misbehaved. Sure. Out, and some of it was just because they didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you talked about even all of our discipline has to be out of love. And I, I, I like how you went out of the way to make sure that it's, if they've never been instructed, right. you can't just get mad because they yelled. Because they're a child. They're, that's, in other words, it should be a, something's going off in us, like something's wrong with them. Instead of, be quiet, shut up. Yeah. It's like, that, they don't know how else to say something's wrong. So it's kind of like, hey, th get to the root of it. And love will cause us to do that. Yeah. And instruct them, hey, when we're upset, then you don't do that. Like, so I, I was watching this clip of, uh, this is parenting clip, that this child just smacked their mom in the face. It's like a two-year-old child. And, and the, the parent obviously gets mad. You want to get upset. And the, th the, the video is like, okay, pause that was the only way they know how to get attention as a two-year-old, right? Like, they, And so it's like, okay, you have to, if they've never corrected that behavior, hey, this is like, you have to do gentle hands, mm -hmm. right? So you take their hand, you say, hey, gentle. That, this is how you get yeah, my attention. This is, this is how you get my attention. If you need some, so it's like, if you've never explained, or, and you, you reiterate that, explain, walk them through the correct way to do it. Yeah. And then if they, can, if they go against it, like, hey, you've learned, you've not, you do know the right yeah. way and you went against it, well, there's a disciplinary action. A, a fun aside, my kids were sitting with some friends, yeah. and they, the friends were like, is that true? <laughs> did, did your dad actually tell right. you how to act when right. you went to someone else's right. house? And they looked at them with all sincerity, and they said, when we went to your house. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. My dad, growing up, we, my, he, I, we just knew we'd be at a friend's house. He just had to clear his throat. Mm. <clears throat> so if we were out you know, there with the adults where the kids are over here, and we're getting too rowdy, we're, you know, being rambunctious, 
we, we, I knew what that meant. And you went from a run to a yes, I knew exactly a slower exactly. walk. I, I, I exact, I knew it. And if it was gonna, if he had to clear his throat again, Ooh. God forbid. Let <laughs> because, yeah, no, because it, we, it, it was a, it, we, we used to get the same talk, and we have the same talk. And again, again, being a pastor, you know, there's a sense of like the pastor's kids can't be crazy. Yeah, they can't you know? be. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's judging. <laughs> no, and they expect your kids to be completely, right. you know, angels, right. which they're kids, you know, and, and that's where, for a period of time, we actually didn't go out to eat. Right. Yeah. Because we just knew yep. you know, that's if easy. I take these rambunctious, energy-filled kids <laughs> to a restaurant, yeah. they're going to be jumping on the booth like it's a trampoline, right. leaning over the backside of the, the chair yeah. and, and looking at everybody and messing with them and all. Right. And, and sometimes that's cute and fun. Yeah. But I mean, when, when there's that season of the terrible twos or threes yeah. or whatever it is that, that the, the individual child, because some of them are different. It's yeah. some earlier, some later in their development that you just know, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and we've had as they've grown, hey, if these are appropriate conversations yeah. to bring up. These are not right. uh, things like don't ask for a sleepover in front of your friends mm-hmm. so that yeah. if I have to say no, yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we had to share those things with our kids and have those teachable moments. Um, you know, hey, when adults are, are asking questions, you can share this much, but don't share these things. Those are private yeah. things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and our kids have been wonderful and have, have grown and been able to ask questions. Um, I love their sincere hearts yeah. when they apologize. Oftentimes, we're not, like I said, jumping to punishment. Right. That's not the goal of discipline. The goal of discipline is a disciplined life, mm-hmm. right? To, to, to live a good life. Right. And so we've, we've been able to uniquely see that. And, and hopefully that helps parents that are out there. And if you've got some individual questions, I think this is a great point maybe to start wrapping this up because, yeah. you know, I, I think we would love to hear some of those individual questions, you know, uh, like my kid has ADHD. Is yeah. there something I can do with that? Or, you know, yeah. I, I don't know, you know, because there's unique things that we deal with. Yes. Um, grandparents yes. deal with different things and, and step parents deal with different things. Um, you know, we've got a wealth of information here at The Rock. And if you have an individual question, I'd love for you to post it in the comments section yeah. and we will get an answer. Yeah. You know, and, and next time we're together, because uh, this, this weekend, it's Mother's Day weekend. Yep. Pastor yeah. Jessica's going to be teaching gonna be uh, from the mama's perspective. So we hear the other side of the story. <laughs> yeah, now you get the real <laughs> e-Hollywood true inside scoop, you know. Uh, Pastor Dan, I'm going to put you on the spot as we kind of close out here. Yes. You made reference to uh, some scriptures and prayers that you pray over your family. Yeah. Are, you, are those top secret or? No, 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 no. I you let one out of the bag last night. Did I? Uh, yeah, Psalms one one. Psalm one. Uh, yeah, Psalm one. Um, it, yeah, actually, Psalm let one. me let me get out my my notes here because I do so then, have so that. In, in other words, if you, if you haven't watched it yet, you talked about there's scriptures and uh, that he prays over his family, reads over his family every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wife and those like, oh man, those would be. So we can get some of these in the notes, but Pastor Dan's going to maybe... Uh, by the way, I pray for you guys' scriptures too, yeah, but yeah. Um, here's, here's some for my family. I pray the will of God be done in our families on earth as it is in heaven. Yep. I pray that the will of God be done in our family. May we be your willing and obedient servants that mm-hmm. eat the good of the land. Yep, that's that's a great one from Isaiah. Uh, may we do the will of God from the heart. Um, I, I, I say may none of us be shipwrecked nor castaways concerning the yeah. faith. That's Apostle Paul's words. Yeah. Uh, may we walk worthy of our call, walk worthy of the Lord, be fully pleasing in His sight. Okay. Uh, may we walk worthy of the gospel to which we're called. Um, I, I pray the words of Jesus that He told us to pray. May we be counted worthy to stand before you on the day of your return and escape those things which are to come upon the earth. Oh. Um, I, I pray individually for my family. Uh, I pray that we would, that, uh, here's a great one, um, uh, the prayer of Jabez. Oh, yeah. I pray that over our family. Right. Okay, some of you guys are familiar with that, and uh, I believe it's First Chronicles. Um, I pray Romans twelve one and two. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and yeah. acceptable before us. Um, I pray give us this day our daily bread. Uh, I pray healing scriptures. I pray prosperity scriptures. Um, I'm just going through for, yeah. for time's sake because there's a, a, yeah. a quite a list. I pray the armor of God from Ephesians over our right. family. Um, my goodness, uh, let me see what I got here. I what pray deliverance Dan, scriptures. I mean, is, uh, you, you talked a lot about of practical things, but you're praying the word, the word, and you see fruit because I, the word is fruitful. <laughs> it, it's a it's a well, multivitamin on, that I take every day, right? Okay. You know, a lot of people take vitamins or take supplements, and yep. you know they'll drink their coffee. The but 
this, the word of God every day. Yeah. What do you want for your family? Sow that seed into them, you know, and, and pray those things individually over them. So, yeah. Thank you. Pastor, would you close us out? Pray, maybe pray over the parents or yeah. those believing for something for their children. For sure. Or yeah. For sure. Well, Father, we're just grateful, Lord. And, and we just want to pray over parents, God, grandparents, uh, uh, guardians, step parents, uh, Lord, single parents. God, whatever, whatever it is, even foster parents, God, Lord, we thank you that uh, you have given us a gift in these children that you are allowing us to raise. God, and as stewards, I pray that we'd be found faithful, God. And Lord, that we would be consistent, consistent in love, God, to each, every individual child, God, every individual gift that you've given to us, Lord, that we would appreciate, that we would value, that we would love them for who they are. And, and as well, see the potential of who you're creating them to be, God. That with the eye of faith that we would see you molding them, God, not us hammering them into that image that we would create, but God, that you would be the potter and they would be the clay, that their hearts would be uh, just pliable, God, to what it is that you are forming them, God, the, the individual way that you've created them and, and that they would bend to your will, that they would not be rigid, uh, that they would not be inflexible, but that, God, that they would bow their lives in worship to you, God. And as parents, we'd be able to help them in that process, Lord, through our faith, God, believing you for them as individuals, God, to grow up, God, no matter the challenges they face, no matter the unique things, God, I know that there's a lot of unique things, Lord, that, that everybody has a story, everybody has a challenge, God, that's individual to them. And, and Lord, there might be groupings of them where it's health or mental health or, uh, you know, different uh, backgrounds or, or situations, challenges that they face, face uh, lack or poverty or, or affluence and wealth. God, each of them comes with their own challenges. And so, Lord, I, I just pray, God, that in the, the individual mix, God, that there would be a faith that rises on the inside of these, these parents, God, and these, these people that are raising children, Lord. And I, I pray, Father God, that your word would bubble up from the inside of them, God, and that they would believe you for what it is that they see in your word, the potential that they have, God, and that there would be Jephthahs, God, even though they might have been uh, birthed out of the wrong circumstances, God, that you would use them as mighty men and women of faith, God. Solomon's, who, who's, whose parents did the wrong thing, God, and yet here you raised him up and, and you loved him, God. And so I thank you, Lord, that there would just be that, that grace upon their lives, Lord, and that they would be people of discipline, God. Discipline wouldn't be a dirty word, God, that they would be strong enough and courageous enough to speak up, to, to give the instruction, Lord, to confront issues, God, uh, Lord, even to lead kids through repentance of sin. Uh, that's something we didn't have time to talk about. But Lord, you can lead us in those things, God. Yes. I thank you for your word. First John 1, 9, God, and other scriptures, Lord, the Psalms where we see David asking for forgiveness, Lord. I thank you, God, that you offer this to us and that for our children, when they mess up, God, that you've provided the blood of Jesus and that we can lead them to Jesus and that they can receive that same forgiveness and love and that, God, that their lives would be disciplined for their good and for the good of those that they come in contact with. Father, we just thank you for that special grace on parents. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for your time, Pastor Dan. Yeah. Hey, we'll see you in church. God bless you guys. Love you. Check out those comments.